My story is called Twin Pimps. So I come from a family of five, and we had a lot of car drama in our life. We had an Impala that's engine was held together by a coat hanger. We had a blue VW van that we often pushed to get started, like in Little Miss Sunshine. And we had an old Oldsmobile that our grandparents gave us. We were a practical and unshamed family, but mostly it was my mother who was practical and unshamed. Being a mother of five, she did what, she, she did what it takes, like drive me to school in reverse. So we were living in Tennessee, I was 10 years old, and we're in the old Oldsmobile, and she backs out of the driveway. She goes to put it in drive, and it won't go forward. So I need to get to school. So she's like, well, I'll just drive you to school in reverse. Because it still went. And I'm in the passenger seat having like a rain man moment, like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. Like, like repeating. <laughs> so we're going backwards through town. It's a little small town. And it's like, are we really are we going forward? Or are we going backwards? It's sort of an existential question, actually. And although my mother is unshamed, I made her drop me off two blocks from school. <laughs> so in 1996, I had just graduated from George Washington University, where I had played basketball, and then had played professionally overseas in Turkey for a while. And although I was grateful for those experiences, I was really living out my parents' dream. And although the basketball dream was over, I uh, was still sort of living out their dream by working at an affordable housing project in Washington, D.C. at a church. For those of you who don't know, my father was a minister, not a fish stick eating minister. But he was a minister, so he was happy that I was on, good, on a good path, even though Luther Place Memorial Church was in the premier prostitution district of DC. And I had this car. It was a gray topaz. Do you guys know what a gray topaz is? You had one, right. Right, why is it named after a shiny jewel? I call mine toy. Okay, well, I, I don't really understand why they name such a generic car after a, a jewel when it's such an obvious piece of shit. I don't know if they think they're gonna like trick you into thinking you're fancy. But any fanciness that the Topaz had, I destroyed. Or rather, the friends that I lent it to destroyed when they took their cat to the vet. Put the cat in the kennel, the cat peed, it leaks onto the seat. The smell is there forever. Because we all know that cat pee is omnipresent, intractable. It's like an idea, you just can't wrap your head around. And even if I was removable with my $24,000 a year job, I was too poor to get it taken care of, and so were my friends. So I bumped along in my topaz, because literally, you bumped along, you know, because one of the seats was broken. It was like rocked, actually. So, um, and every day I would park in the outdoor lot down the street from where I worked. I would sort of like skid in, you know, like Carol Burnett. And uh, it was a big, dusty, dirty lot, and the only words of English spoken were no, yes, and I don't know. And I would give the keys to the attendants every day, and they would park, you know, park and reconfigure in and out. You know, there's like making space for other cars. And every day I would go out to my car and take the keys from under the visor, get into my car, and drive off into the fog of my parents' dream. And one day, I go to get the keys from the visor, and they're not there. So I like look all around. I do this kind of like Tasmanian devil dance, like what the fuck, you know, Wah! like through the car. I'm like, here are the keys, and there are no keys. So I go to the parking lot, dude, and I say, hey, man, you know, I don't, I don't think I say it like that, but um, I'm like, you know, all the keys, and he's like, you know, just a little like motion of there under the visor. And I'm like, you know, they're not under the visor. So instead of answering me, he just comes over and he does the same Tasmanian devil dance. <laughs> and he says, I don't know. And I say, I don't know either. And I'm like, well, where are they? He's like, I don't know. And then we just stand there silent. <laughs> and, um, and then he walks me over to the adjacent hotel where he thinks that the manager is. So he looks for the manager. I think he looks for the manager. Um, again, I don't know. 
So we go back and we're not getting anywhere. And um, I'm like, okay, look, dude. Uh, I don't know why. I don't think I called him dude. I kept saying that. <laughs> but I'm like, uh, you know, you need to get car keys made because no, nothing's happening. And it's starting to get dark. I'm like, you need to get car keys made. There's no cell phone. Um, I don't really know how to get the help I need. Um, that's the other thing my parents gave me. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and so I'm like, look, you know, you, 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 you. And that was, so he sort of mumbles like, okay. And I don't really even know if he, he heard me. Um, but either way, I'm sure he just thinks I'm a, like a stupid girl. You know, I'm like six, four, pretty young. Definitely he's thinking I'm stupid. I'm thinking he's a puff of smoke. I'm like, I don't understand a word you're saying. He doesn't stand a, understand a word I'm, of, uh, that I'm saying. So I go home and I come back in the morning. I don't know how I get to work. And I look for my car and of course it's not there. I go to check on my car, of course, because this is a stealing theme. So you know where this is going. So the car is not there and I go to, there's a new guy and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, where's my car? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I say, you know, uh, you were going to get locksmith and get keys made, and the keys weren't there. And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, we did this Tasmanian devil dance. And he's like, I don't know. So no one's getting anywhere. So I go up back up to the church to call the police. And please come. We take a report. We talk to the attendants. Nobody knows anything. Shocking. Um, so then I go to lunch after this whole period of you know thing. And I'm outside. And talking to my little size is a thing, right? So she was little to me. So she's this little blonde, you know, nonprofit girl. And she's like, hey, you know, I'm really sorry. It's true. It's like an experience. Um, so I, she's like, I'm really sorry about your car. And I say, thanks. Uh, yeah, it really sucks. She's what kind of car do you have? And I say, I had a gray topaz. And as I say that, the car comes rolling, <laughs> rolling around the corner. I'm like, it looks like that. <laughs> car, that's the car. And so there are you know, no cell phones. I'm like, you stay. I don't know what she's going to do. She's just going to see if they go anywhere. And I'll run up. I call the police. I call back down. And the car is, um, is parked right in front of the church. And so I don't know if like the, the nonprofit girl like waved the car down, but um, there's a guy standing outside of the car, like sort of sauntering, and he's got my Starbucks mug in his hand. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, that's my Starbucks mug and my car. <laughs> and he's like, my brother said he rented the car. And I'm like, rented? Who would rent that fucking thing? <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. And who would rent it out? And what would the contract look like? Would it say, please re return promptly at 1 p.m. in front of its owner, wrecked, which is why they parked it right in front of the church, with bloody needles in the back. Starbucks mug is on us. <laughs> so the police talked to the sauntering guy. And there's not a lot of information. He decides that he's going to use this guy for bigger information. But again, I have no tools to really figure out what happened. Um, was it a car rental scheme? Did the guys go and steal the keys in the middle of the day? Um, nobody knows. And as the week went on, I found out that from one of the shelter residents that the guy with the Starbucks mug um, was part of a twin pimp duo. <laughs> yeah. Twin pimps. So when I ask myself who would rent that fucking car, twin pimps. <laughs> so even though I never really figured out what happened with the car, I think I can count my blessings because the car was technically totaled, which means it had a dent <laughs> and like a whacked out wheel. That's how much it was worth. It's also why they you know, returned it to me with impeccable timing. And then I got an insurance check for one or two thousand dollars, I can't remember. But the upside is that I moved to New York three months later and the fog was slowly lifting, letting go of the pieces of shit that my pieces of shit cars in my life. 
and the dreams that my parents had for me. So I do thank the Twin Pimps for saving me from the topaz <laughs> and sending a little money my way because we all know I would never have been able to sell that thing or even give it away. And who would have known that I'd, it'd be the Twin Pimps who would take me out of reverse and set me free forward into a new life? Yeah. Thank you.